Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. Oklahoma State researchers released a brand new wheat variety this week. We'll take a look at how it's different from the others a little bit later in the show. But first we're joined by Jeff Edwards, our Extension Small Grain Specialist, to talk about the state of this year's crop. Jeff, what's your take so far? And I guess it's almost first hollow stem. Well, the, the crop is in good shape right now. We are nearing first hollow stem. Anyone that's kind of on the fence about top dress applications, you know, that nitrogen should be, should be going out there as soon as possible. And it is time to start checking for first hollow stem. We've had a fairly warm winter. We're a little bit farther along than we would normally be. And first hollow stem is going to come early this year. And kind of your rundown on exactly how to check because we're, we're seeing it already, as you said. Right, so, so you're going to need to check in a non-grazed area of the field. It could be outside of a hot wire or something like that. Uh, you're going to select the largest tiller on the plant and you're going to split it open longitudinally here and look for hollow stem. And this variety right here, we're looking for about the diameter of a dime of hollow stem below the developing grain, grain head. So this variety uh, right now would be right at first hollow stem. Now this wheat was sown around the 1st of September, very early sown, had a lot of fertility under it. It's probably a little more advanced than a lot of wheat around the state, but uh, still it's, it's time to start checking because it is a really important growth stage. What kind of questions do you get about cattle on weed and what it does to the crop? Well, one of the biggest misconceptions out there about first hollow stem and removing cattle from wheat pasture is the thought that as long as the cattle aren't actually clipping the heads from the wheat plant, we're okay. And that's not the case. If the wheat is large enough where the cattle are actually damaging the developing wheat heads, we're way past first hollow stem. The reason first hollow stem works is because removing cattle at that stage allows enough time for the plant to regain leaf area lost during grazing. Uh, Dylan Bucci, a graduate student of mine, did some work a few years ago that found we need about 60% ground cover to optimize yield in the system. First hollow stem allows us to get close to that. A good indicator. Any disease concerns right now? Well, we do have some disease concerns. There's some powdery mildew active, some leaf rust out there. We found some stripe rust in southern Oklahoma already, which is really the one that devastated our crop last year. So that's a situation we need to monitor. Some of our producers are considering what we call split fungicide applications. Really a, a two-pass system is the best way to describe it where you make one fungicide application at about jointing or just after and then another one at flag leaf. Uh, in a severe disease year, those, those applications can have some benefit. The key is timing. Uh, so you have to make that first application a full rate of fungicide just after jointing. So it's not going to be something you tank mix with top dress nitrogen. Uh, and by the time that application is kind of wearing off, the flag leaf is coming out, and that's when you make the second application. I generally try and go low cost in terms of fungicide on the first application, save the best product, which which is generally the most expensive product for that flag leaf application. Of course, with any wheat crop, we're always concerned about the weather. Give us the lowdown on the freeze damage window and then kind of what, what where we are in terms of moisture overall. Well, we're, we're just entering that window for freeze injury. During the winter, we can have a lot of tissue injury and recover from it fairly well. But once the wheat is jointing, the growing points above the soil surface, that's when the injury gets real. The farther that developing wheat head moves up the plant, the more risk we have in terms of injury and the harder it is for those plants to recover. And of course, the most dangerous time for freeze injury is when the wheat is flowering. So we're entering that window. In terms of moisture, the wheat crop is sitting pretty good in, just in terms of moisture available to the crop. We could use a nice slow rain though to move that top dress nitrogen into the rooting profile. So that's really what we need right now is just a nice slow gentle rain. Okay, we'll hopefully get that soon. Jeff, thanks a lot. We'll see you again soon. And now we want to hear from our wheat geneticist, Brett Carver, on the new variety called Stardust. <laughs> 